Hi everyone, in this tutorial series I would like to show you how you can use Quixel Mixer for texturing your 3D asset. Mixer is a very powerful software for PBR texturing and it's uh, provided completely free from Quixel who are more famous for their Megascans textures library. You can directly download it from their website. I will skip the technical details of what PBR is for this tutorial series and will directly show you the workflow of taking an asset from Blender uh, and texturing it in Mixer. I will also assume that you are not a beginner to Blender and you know your way around this tool. So let's start. I have already prepared this model and I have provided this file also in the description below and you can download it if you want to follow along in this tutorial. So this tire model here uh, is comprised of two main objects, the nuts and the tire. And I will explain why I separated this object into these two parts in a short while. There is also a high poly version of this model and it's quite detailed but it's also about 20,000 faces uh, which we don't want to work on for texturing. So we will use this low poly and the first step is to bake the details from high poly to low poly. I have unwrapped it already and as you can see both of these objects occupy the same uh, UV space. At the moment Mixer doesn't support multiple texture sets. So either you create a separate Mixer project for each one of your sub objects or you can use only one UV space like I do here. The developers are saying that they will add uh, this support later this year. Uh, so we are very hopeful that it will be done soon. So let's start baking. I will bake a normal map and ambient occlusion. Also other some other uh, surface detail maps like crevices and curvature map. Also my high poly has a color IDs assigned to it, uh, to the vertices. Here you go. So I will also bake a color ID map which will help me in isolating different uh, mesh parts in Mixer for texturing. So I have separated by color the areas which should have different material like the rubber or this metal part and this uh, nuts. So for baking I want to use a very powerful baking add-on called Bake Wrangler. I have already made a video for it on how to use it and you can find it in the description below. For this video I will quickly go over it but I will not go into much detail about how it works. So if you just want to bake it should be fine if you just follow this video. So once you install that add-on you will get a new editor here called the bake node editor. So it gives you a node based baking structure. So if you press new, you get the basic node setup for your first bake. So basically here you specify your inputs and the second node is the settings for your bake pass where you specify your bake type and the other settings to kind of influence it and then your output image and you can reuse it by copying it shift D. So it's very uh, configurable and reusable. So let's set up a bake for our tire material first. So the source is the high poly and target is the low poly selected. Uh, we should add a margin of about 4 and 4 and no we are not using a multi res. In the bake pass we keep the normal selected and for the device we can use the GPU to speed it up and samples for normal one sample is enough and because I just want to test it for now if it's working and the normal appears correctly I will use a lower resolution but I will crank it up later. Coming to the image path node you can give in a path, accept, and then a name, size, 
and for the space I will use non color space for the normal and then we can bake uh, for the output of baking you can toggle system console and uh, this should be changed in the newest version so it should pop up there should be an output that should pop up automatically when you start a bake so after it's completed we can have a look at it in our image editor let's open the file and it already looks very good uh, maybe I can decrease this ray distance. So this is the distance of the ray which is casted uh, from the low poly inwards and it finds a high poly surface and then it extracts the details from it. So if you get some artifacts from your bake, let me just show you I think. Uh, let's see if we can get some artifacts this way. It's complete. So something like this that means that it has not reached the surface so you can then increase it so let me just increase it. five bake again so it's ended and you can see now it's gone so in this way you can uh, try to play with your ray distance and if you find artifacts in your uh, normal bake so in my experience, we only need to uh, set up the ray distance for normals and it should work for every other baking type uh, the same way. So you don't need to change it again. So let's set it up for the nuts as well. Uh, the same way, select nuts low and nuts high. Connect it here. So this will make sure that it uh, gets baked into the same image. Bake image. It's completed let's reload the image so we have more detail here uh, let's go into shading and see how it looks so here is our map let's add a new material and if you press ctrl shift T and select your normal map you will see that it's already added with the additional nodes and it's already applied so this is a handy shortcut and it works if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled so it's applied to the tire object let's also apply it the material to the nuts and if you see it without the normals and with the normals so it has the detail to bake the color id i want to change something first so i want to apply a material to the high poly and I want the color from the vertices to be assigned as the surface color of the high poly so to do this I will add a node called the vertex color select the color this is very important and connect the color to the base color and now you can see that the vertex color is being used as the base color or the albedo of the high poly and then we can bake this high poly to our low poly. I will also apply it to the nuts object. And now we can bake it. So let's copy our nodes. Connect the meshes again. In the pass node we can select albedo. And this will bake the albedo color uh, selected for the principal BSDF. So this one, the base color. And let's rename it to albedo and change it to sRGB from non color. And let's bake. So let's see how it looks. it already looks okay so I have all the bakes already set up and I will show you now so this file and all the other uh, necessary files to continue with this tutorial I will provide a link to them in the description below so in this file you can see that all the bakes are already set up this is the normal the color ID 
from albedo, cavity, curvature, ambient occlusion, and they are then feeding into a batch bake node. You can get it from here. And when I press this button, bake all, it will bake all of them simultaneously. I will quickly go over the settings for each of them and so that you get an idea of how to set it up yourself. So for cavity, I am using CPU as the device and 2K as resolution and a higher sample rate uh, because it, it tends to get some noise if the sample rate is too low. Unlike the normal where we don't need any samples uh, higher than one for the curvature is the same that we can work with one sample and the device is GPU to make it faster. For the ambient occlusion I'm also, it's also the same case as cavity so you need a higher sample rate to get rid of noise. And for the normal albedo and the curvature I am using uh, super sampling that is I am baking at a higher resolution like 4K and then the image is at a lower resolution 2K. So the down sampling will actually uh, contribute towards anti-aliasing of the final image and this will help us greatly in making the quality of our bakes better. I am not using the same technique for ambient occlusion or the cavity because they are using multiple samples already so I just realized that this is not connected so let's connect it now so let's look at the image settings for each of them so for normal I am using non-color for albedo or the color ID it's RGB because I need the color information and for the rest of them I'm using non-color black and white or grayscale and if you want you can change the depth from 8 to 16 for extra information but for me uh, for now it should work as it is so these are the best settings that I have found by experimentation and maybe you can find them better uh, feel free to experiment and I will start the bake now. So this can take a while, especially the cavity bake is very slow and since I am also baking each of them in 4K, so this will also uh, add more time to the bake. So let's wait. So the bake is complete, it took about 15 minutes. Let's have a look at the maps and here they are. So this is the normal, then the curvature, color ID, cavity, AO. And if in the AO or cavity you notice that there is this noise in your case, then you can try to increase the samples here for the AO and cavity. For me, I will keep it as it is and just continue with it. So next we need to export our meshes. So let's select our low poly mesh and we want the, these two objects to be part of the same mesh. So let's go to file export FBX and then use this selected objects. So these two will be part of the same FBX file. Let's change the name to tire underscore low dot fpx and we don't need to change any other settings uh, in this case uh, and let's just click export. So here we have our low poly mesh. So armed with our low poly mesh and the big texture maps we are now ready to jump into mixer and start texturing. Uh, I will continue it in the next video, so stick around. Bye.